नमस्ते माय नेम इज किरण सिंह एंड आई एम द कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ श्री अरविंदो इंटीग्रल लाइफ सेंटर एट ओरो यूनिवर्सिटी इट इज माय प्लेजर टू वेलकम यू ऑल टू टुडेस वेबिनार ऑर्गेनाइज्ड अंडर श्री अरविंदो लाइफ सेंटर टाइटल कंपैशनेट सिस्टम फ्रेमवर्क बिफोर वी बिगिन आई वुड लाइक टू मेंशन दैट वी एट ओरो यूनिवर्सिटी एज अ पार्ट ऑफ आवर वेरियस एफर्ट्स इन कमेटी कोविड-19 सिचुएशन had organized a webinar titled the art of tinkering ways to transform stress into strengths as a step ahead we are conducting a study named study of warriors for our younger learners the study involves participation of 10th and 12th standard students as this age is very critical and many factors within an individual play a major role knowing one's strength and areas of opportunities in this situation is critical for self resilience study of warriors specifically aims on knowing how an individual's personality traits play a vital role in their ability to handle the stress and anxiety that they are going through in today's time in order to participate in the study the google form link is mentioned in the chat box the response will be kept confidential and private To begin our webinar, I would like to share a few words about SALC. The SALC Center is dedicated to Sri Arvindo and realizing his vision and thought on integral life. The center's goal is to foster inquiry and new thinking in academia, public discourses, business, law, politics, economics, science, and technology in the light of Sri Arvindo's integral world vision. Our core learning and research areas include integral education, integral yoga, integral psychology, and integral art. We are, we are actively working on the integral education program in Foundation of Indian Culture as well as Sri Arvindo's studies at Oro University. The center operates on the vision of Honorable Sri H V Rama Ji, founder president Oro University. Oro University founded by Rama family and is is inspired by the vision and teaching of sri arvindo and mother as the goal of clc include providing a platform for the exchange of best practices in the implementing implementation of integral education the webinar today will provide an enriching experience for all our audience members and participants who have joined us from around the world today's webinar on compassionate systems framework will reflect one of the many ways in which clc supports integral learning the goal of compassionate system framework is to grow compassionate integrity in the students and teachers to have alignment between how we think feel and act by virtue of an ever unfolding awareness of interconnectedness these skills are vital to human prosperity and even survival in a world of increasing interdependency where we face immense environmental political and socio economic challenge from not understanding this interconnection we are honored to have suchitra sarda ji who will deliver this talk and address us on the compassionate system framework suchitra ji has expertise in implementing social emotional learning mindfulness and systems thinking in schools development work refugee context and in international institution she has also experience in implementing programmatic a uh, change from state board curriculum to ib and igcsc suchitra ji consulted a school district charter school several non profits and uh, a foundation in the us on their theory of action measurement framework implementation plans and learning and development in addition to a post graduate diploma in business studies from london school of economics and politics political science and a masters in international education development from teachers college columbia university she is currently pursuing a master practitioner's certification program on compassionate system framework at mit usa it is a blended year long certification program please also join me welcoming vice chancellor dr rajan velukar ji oro university and dr rohit singh ji dean of academics at oro university I request Rohit ji to please give his welcome remarks. Rohit ji. 
Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome Suchitra ji on board with uh, Aura University and the CLC program. Uh, I would love to hear, ma'am, how the three dimensions of C learning, which is related to personal, social, and system uh, oriented, oriented, leading towards uh, head, heart, and hand, and in order to bring together, you know, the awareness, compassion, and the engagement level. within the students my challenge is that the c learning program which we are trying to do uh, or try to implement is always uh, helping us to bring what you call the students the university or the system and the uh, what do you call the society into picture which is little bit challenging into the higher education system uh, so on behalf of the oro university i extend you a warm welcome and looking forward to uh, listen to you how to bring these three elements into our teaching and daily teaching learning uh, and learning process thank you so much ma'am okay before before we begin i would like to encourage all in the audience to participate today by asking questions to do that please type a question in the chat box at any time during the talk we'll keep track of all questions and share them at the end of the webinar and now suchitra ji may i please request you to address our audience okay yes, Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank Dr. Rajan Velukar for inviting me to this webinar today and giving me an opportunity to talk to you all. Uh, I would also like uh, Dr. to thank Dr. Rohit Singh and Dr. Kiran Singh for organizing today's webinar and all her associates from Oro University. I am currently today going to talk about compassionate systems framework, primarily not really about C learning, uh, Dr. Rohit Singh ji. um uh, because my master practitioner's program uh, which i'm currently pursuing at mit is on compassionate systems framework and i also did my master's thesis uh, from teachers college columbia university in new york in compassionate systems framework um the reason why i chose compassionate systems framework or i chose to go back to school at this point in my career was my own experience as a school head and an educator I was uh, quite dissatisfied uh, with the education system and the multiple interventions that we have and all these uh, promising to develop a whole child but the number of interventions that a school is bringing into the school system is innumerable and it is confusing uh, uh, for the parents stressful for the teachers and children are lost and that you know the interventions like multiple intelligences social emotional learning meditation international curriculums uh, after school program extracurricular activities uh, there are so many things happening but there is not a single intervention or a single approach that it that is addressing the whole child and that was my search uh, when i say the whole child i mean the cognitive or the academic or the knowledge aspect of course but not just that also the social and the spiritual aspects of the child and i found that we did not have one approach or one system or one integrated program that addressed all these and that's why i decided to go back to school and i found compassionate systems framework and at this point this is a you know the just the right time in uh, to do this presentation uh, as you can very well see we are a complex interconnected interdependent and rather messy large system and with the covid crisis this interconnectedness or this hyper interconnectedness has become very obvious and these kind of crises these kind of pandemics bring show us how small we are and how vulnerable we are and how dependent we are on each other and it is overwhelming seeing the suffering of others is overwhelming and we start asking questions about what can we do to you know support others what can we do to address the current crisis what can we do to address the unintended consequences of the current crisis for example when we went into lockdown almost a couple of months ago the idea was to con you know contain the pandemic or contain the disease from spreading which we managed to to some extent however 
the migrant population suffered immensely even today our migrants are suffering we hear about their deaths every day in our newspaper and it's painful it's um, overwhelming it's saddening and this can bring about anxiety within us and we don't know how to address these kind of unintended consequences of the actions that are that we are taking uh, in our own system and our typical response to something like this when this happens is to go into our bubbles not because we are aware of it but just because we cannot deal with the kind of overwhelming nature of the suffering we either go into denial or we emotionally disconnect and we choose not to be aware of the entirety of the problem because we we don't know how to deal with it the problem problem is that we look at this system that is there something as outside of us we don't think of the problem as us as us being a part of it we look at the system as something which is outside of us um and a classic example of that is uh, you know the system that we are all in education uh, i am sure many of you are familiar with this image many of us have uh, uh, joked about it laughed about it criticized our education system and been frustrated at some point in our careers um, or in our lives i remember as a child i i i felt like that fish in the bowl i felt i was being tested for something that i was not capable of doing um i wanted to swim and i was being tested for climbing the tree and that left a uh, many scars i i hated math right until i went um, i started working at the columbia engineering school and you know discover the magic of math and physics and stats and how wonderful these subjects were however it was not because of my education system that i developed that love much later in my life and we just continue you know so we are a part of this system and we criticize it however we accepted it and by accepting it we are reinforcing the same um structures uh, that created these dynamics to understand that we are a part of that system is what systems thinking really is and with compassionate systems we aim to develop these skill sets for a systems thinker a system th systems thinker knows that he or she is a part of this larger picture he is a part of this whole, whole and they can make connections with the whole even when they are not related they can see the whole jigsaw puzzle for what it is um without being overwhelmed by it systems thinkers uh, also know how to internalize uh, perspective taking it is um we say that we should consider people's perspectives and uh, we talk about it but when it comes to decision making many times we revert to our natural ways but as if we are trained as children to take perspectives to internalize what it is to take perspectives to consider each one's thought processes it becomes second nature to them to uh, take perspectives and therefore i say internalize it because it's a way they think it perspective taking becomes a part of their natural thinking capabilities similarly system thinkers uncover mental models what are mental models mental models are deeply held internal images of how we perceive the world it's based on our experience our context our cultures our families our ideas these are the things that shape our mental models and our mental models are not the same as the mental models of others around us because theirs are shaped by their lives and to understand that our mental models are different from those of others and those of others are as valuable as ours is a sign of a systems thinker this can bring in a lot of richness to the uh, to teams to thinking to problem solving and that's what we build in our children right from a young age so it is not something they have to worry about it comes naturally to them these mental models understanding these different mental models also helps in finding sustainable solutions uh, to our problems our global problems because these uh, these children don't look at just the event and try to quick fix it they're looking at what caused the event what were the underlying causes what were the patterns what were the it what were the um, artifacts what were the issues that were lying below which we cannot see 
that cause this event to happen and they address those causes of those problems. Another sign of a systems thinker is that they are capable of having emotional literacy. They know how to handle their emotions. Emotions are those that are triggered due to events or people or things that happen around us and we perceive them uh, as feelings. The ability to be able to see these feelings and make a choice on how you will react to them is a sign of a systems thinker. So the systems thinkers uh, do not allow these kind of overwhelming situations like the current pandemic to emotionally hijack them. They are there, it's not that they are in their bubble, they are very much a part of the system, they are taking action and doing their best, but they are not emotionally hijacked or drained by what is happening uh, in the current situation. And here I would like to talk about the difference between empathy and compassion. We are uh, social animals and it is natural for us to feel empathy. It is natural for us to ape others and they ape their feelings. That's how we become social, that's how we connect with people. Compassion is, uh, on the other hand, a slightly more refined and developed stage where we not only feel for the other, uh, but we can take a step back and not get overwhelmed by them. We feel for them, we are there for them, we stand next to them, and we do what we can in the best possible way. Another distinguishing feature about compassion is the intention that we want to alleviate their suffering or re reduce their suffering or help them. And in our work, in our context, um, we see compassion as the essentially systemic property of the mind. It is the ability to appreciate systemic forces influencing people and the capacity to hold paradoxes. It is the capacity to see and sense the interconnectedness and the interdependence and the unintended consequences of human behavior that we continue to uh, reinforce without judgment for anyone in the system and with care for everyone in the system. And now that I have uh, established what compassion is, I would uh, like to walk you through what we understand or what we mean by compassionate integrity. The International Baccalaureate Organization coined a phrase, international mindedness. Um, internationally minded students harbor compassion for themselves, for others in the systems, which include both humans and animals, and for this planet. Integrity comes from the root of wholeness in Latin. Likewise, what we want for our students is to think compassionately, feel compassionately, and live compassionately with an ever unfolding awareness of the connectedness. This can extend naturally from oneself to, one's, uh, to the consequences of one's actions, which we believe is the root of all ethical behavior. I want you to take a moment at this time and think about the one time you might have felt compassionate integrity and felt this complete alignment between what you thought and felt and did or took action about. It could be a, something as simple as um, giving milk to a stray cat or um, stopping at a signal when you were in a rush and following it uh, or something larger where you join uh, some sort of an activist group. Uh, What's important is that experience of this alignment of thinking, feeling, and doing. And I want you to take this moment to think about that experience because that is what we hope to bring, that experience, that alignment in our schools and in our children. And I'd like to show you this little clip that uh, I have um, asked one of my friends whom here, this school was also a part of my research and it's from Indianapolis in the US. These are elementary school students. This school is implementing the Compassionate Systems Framework and they're doing a unit on water. Um, you know, so they go much beyond just understanding the sources of water or how it can be filtered. The, the, this activity is um, framed in a way where they feel the connectedness to people halfway across the world who don't have water. 
So we'll t I'll talk a little bit after you can see the video. We can just go to the stores and buy water, but they they have to fetch water by hand and by foot. Um, um, I think that we should share instead of us instead of us having lots of water and then not having um, any water. I think we should be equal. I want to cry. And most of them don't even have shoes. Well, because they, they have to walk for two miles, which is, because that means they probably walk more than two miles or three miles or one mile or five miles. Wait, of course, they probably do that. And and carrying the bucket on their head is probably hurt because the water is super heavy. Um, I would like to uh, point out here that while this school is a school in the U.S., um, the Compassionate Systems Framework has, uh, has hubs all around the world, including in, in a refugee camp in Jordan and in Jakarta, um, in, in Indonesia. So it is not that it is a very Western practice. In fact, they have a lot of um, contemplative practices taken from the East. Um, so this is just a, a clip that is from the West, from the US. And as you can see, the 17 uh, global development goals uh, set by the UN outline many of the uh, urgent challenges facing the world. Um, the goals rely on a deep understanding of the underlying um, complex systems. And by doing units such as this, uh, the school is trying to address some of these sustainable goals. Uh, what is important here is to see how the students make the connections and the compassion and they feel for those who they've never seen and the countries they've never been to. And so uh, later on this project went on for the students uh, where they took action and they changed the water systems in their school and they led a project on changing the electricity system and making the school a more sustainable and green school. And then they wrote to the mayor later asking um, if changes could be made in schools in the city. So that's how they took action here. And um, as you can see in the figure, compassionate systems framework, uh, it's, it's an approach uh, which works across subject and content matters. It is not a problem we are, try we are developing, but a certain way of educating that integrates both the cognitive and the affective. By cognitive, I mean the thinking or the understanding or the knowledge and by affective, I mean the caring or the emotions, uh, the feelings. And it's, it's, it's not one single intervention, it is multiple interventions which come together as one and with one single goal of compassionate integrity and international mindedness. So I will go a little further. I've made a few notes on the same figure which I showed you earlier to explain how we are doing this. So I told you about the SDGs, which are the Global Development Goals. 
Now they are part of the content. It's not a subject that is taught. It is integrated into everything that is in the school. And the social and emotional. There is social and emotional integration. I will elaborate a little bit here more on social and emotional learning, especially because Rohitji said uh, I should be talking a little bit about C learning. So C learning is um, an excellent social and emotional learning program which was launched last year last year in India, and it has uh, three domains and three dimensions. So it it looks at awareness, compassion, and engagement on the dimension of self. Uh, social and system so how am i how self aware am i how socially aware am i and how systemically aware am i similarly how self compassionate am i how socially compassionate am i and how systemically compassionate am i and finally how self engaged am i how socially engaged am i and finally how globally engaged am i so broadly speaking these are the components uh, for c learning but we will not uh, in compassionate systems framework we don't take a different curriculum and attach it we integrate it into whatever we are doing so kindness or compassion or ethics that is supported by the c learning curriculum is integrated into a compassionate systems framework uh similarly we use systems tools um so i did not talk about the tools here but we talked about the skill sets that a systems thinker has and to be used tools like the iceberg or where we go under the problem below the iceberg to see what are the underlying causes of these problems and we train them these kind of tools help students uh, see step by step how they can unfold or break the problem into small pieces to see the real causes similarly we have other tools like the ladder of connectedness or the ladder of inference or the emotion cycle of emotion circle of emotions so there are multiple systems tools that we integrate into the teaching and learning um and contemplative practices and mindfulness this is cr critical because we talk about emotional literacy and awareness and mindfulness helps with um, awareness concentration and memory it uh, and contemplative practices help with the capacity to build resilience the capacity to hold those emotions the capacity to understand that they can choose a different reaction so together with together this is an approach which not only addresses the thinking or the cognitive but also the caring or the affective aspects of the child uh developing compassion integrity compassionate integrity and international mindedness and as uh, you can see systems is an approach and therefore we really care about social fields and um we are really interested in seeing how uh, social fields evolve from being destructive uh, to being generative by destructive i mean fields that are shaped by fear or anger or um anxiety and generative social fields are sh fields that are share uh, shaped by joy care compassion love a social field exists between any two individuals you can see when you look into the eyes of a newborn and the spontaneous mimicking that starts and you know it reminds me of the old adage that we are first social before we are individual and um, so every you know this field exists between anybody and think about any new person you have met and there is an instant field that is created between the two of you and our to see how we can look at the social field and make it more generative by cultivating emotional literacy by cultivating and building resilience and helping students to choose the responses that uh, to these feelings that arise emotional literacy comes from understanding that the emotions arise because of triggers outside triggers it could be events people things and these emotions lead to feelings which we experience and they choose how they will react to these feelings they choose to show up in ways which are more generative which are supportive which are the right behaviors of for the social uh, right behaviors for the society and for the larger community 
what we also see is when fields become generative they are not limited to just two individuals or a family or a team or friends they extend to the classroom and they go you know they become much larger than the classroom they extend to the organization the society and, and the community and that's what we hope that we through these various components of systems thinking social emotional learning mindfulness contemplative practices a sustainable development goals and an environment which is generative we help students to unleash their inherent capacity to be compassionate and to be and you know have compassionate integrity so that is all uh, i have to say today about compassionate systems framework thank you very much for listening thank you uh, thank you suchitra ji uh, any any question from uh, participants so i don't see any question but i have questions suchitra ji it is it was wonderful you know uh, i mean it's a practical and uh, uh, wonderful experience here learning program which you talked about i have a question like you know uh, at higher level i mean rohit ji also you know uh, put this point that uh, higher education institution uh, how do we you know uh, create the tools and how do we have create the approaches where uh, they they become you know uh, inter they remain interconnected and uh, uh, become a leader with compassion so this approach is not limited to schools in fact is not necessarily limited to educational organizations either we had people in some banks from thailand come to us because they wanted compassionate integrity in their banking system so it's not limited at all to schools it is an approach that can be used in any context uh who does not want to create generative social fields i can give you an example you know when you go into a cricket stadium you know the you know the social feel you don't have to nobody needs to tell you that there is excitement there is positivity there is you know that kind of charge in the air now if if you had to think of that kind of positivity that kind of excitement and care when you entered any school environment or college and you know university how would you feel and i have experienced that in my own um, higher education experience i went to teachers college and i experienced it so it's not at all limited uh, to schools uh, it can be done in universities we have to work with uh, the professors and faculty uh, you know it is the people who make the change so we need to embody the adults the people um, the espoused values have to be lived so we help the adults uh, work with uh, you know embodying these practices yeah i actually almost in a similar uh, point is raised, raised by richa singh she is asking do you think that approach changes for adults versus children we focus mainly on the adults it's the adults that we focus on who will work with their children uh, our, um, our teachers are good with their kids it is helping them develop the build that resilience to handle all the stress today teachers are so burdened with so much work whether it is uh, professors in universities or in, at the school level uh, that it is it be, to give them that space to hold space for them to be able to be themselves and to address their own emotions so it is um, it is definitely different how you do it with adults but embodying this practice is the first step whether it's with adults or adults with kids if the adults are not doing it themselves they cannot expect the children to do it you cannot teach and not practice so the adults have to practice it and as 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 master practitioners we, we believe we have to practice it so we spend time uh with our own contemplative practices and our own training every single day uh i am a meditator and so are my fellow practitioners so it's not just that we are working on our on the academic end we are also working on the social and the spiritual now there is a question from anu sir how do we judge an emotional scene of someone uh, how do we judge an emotional um well uh, i don't think uh, judging helps 
supporting helps if someone is emotional we instinctively know that they are hurt or upset we might not know the reason or the cause of the hurt and upset but we know there's something wrong we know it that's the social field right you know instantly when someone is upset and that is when we can be there for them without uh, stressing them more so sometimes asking them more questions about what is wrong with them is going to stress them more. uh telling them to tell you uh, what is uh, happening or giving advice might stress them more so we it is very context based but uh, usually just letting that person know that you're there for them and you will help them can change the situation a lot and the the intention matters you know you might say the right words but if your intention is not to help it's the other person will experience the lack of intention but you might not have the ability but you have the intention people feel it people feel your love people feel your care right uh i have some question like do you use certain kind of pedagogy to you know uh, to integrate uh, this compassionate uh, learning program in schools and colleges uh so we are uh, we are not saying that you should use a specific pedagogy but it is the you know it is based on constructivist learning um it is an approach where students feel in charge students are in ownership it is not a teacher centered approach it is a student centered approach it's inquiry it's exploration you know as you saw those children came to their own learning their own understanding that oh it must be difficult for those people because they don't have water so the teacher didn't tell them that in fact there was no teacher in that video um so the constructivist learning definitely is an underlying uh, you know is it's uh, uh yes is yeah. is the basis a learner profile uh, centered uh, pedagogy because so, you are yeah but we are a, uh, you know so while it started with the ib now the compassionate systems framework is not limited only to ib schools and the ib has a learner profile which is a very beautiful learner profile profile however that's just the attitudes that learners should have constructivist learning is the pedagogy that you would use in a classroom and it is based on how learners learn what are the best ways in which learners learn or how learners like to learn uh yeah it's based on constructivist constructivist theory so priya sheer is asking how to train college teachers on csr how to ta- train college teachers on csr um we will have to do workshops with uh, with the faculty and with the staff um, and first understand what the needs are what are the challenges as i said earlier we ourselves use system schools so understand what the problem is and then go you know what are the underlying causes and address the causes but we will we can do it through workshops and online support and face to face support yeah and there is one more question from richa singh how do you generate buy in for such a approach in systems which show indifference and are not willing to change um i think uh, you know there are people who came for this webinar there are people like me who were wanted to change and you know sort out the compassionate systems framework and there are peter Uh, people like peter senge who and mette bol who are actually the developers of this program at mit so there are definitely a small number but there are people who want change and you start with them you start small you start talking about it you start doing it bringing it in your life uh bring in whatever small way you can and that's how it you know it started with 10 hubs when i was doing my uh, my master's thesis and now it's already grown to over 35 uh, 40 um, hubs around the world uh, just a couple of weeks ago i did a presentation and i had 130 participants from 50 different countries participate for the compassionate systems uh, global webinar so there is def- it it grows it takes it's uh, it takes time but um, you know it's growing uh, i you know oro university is taking up its own steps doing c learning which is the first step almost it's a very good entry point into the compassionate systems uh, framework for that matter uh richa has said thanks it was really depth in depth answer and uh, Uh, there is one mahadev bhai also said it is enlightening uh, address and uh, which i also love the concept also it's wonderful uh, i've i've heard about it that you have uh, you know done 
um, so many workshop in refugee camps so without any material because refugee camp i can understand the you know situation and environment there so can you share if you can share you know so that so i worked with the irc in new york so we had all the material but uh, so that was not a problem these were refugee students who had uh, been you know brought to uh, new york but they had not yet entered the school system in new york so our training was to help them uh, get ready and accustomed to what they would face when they go into schools in new york so i was in a much better place than many of my counterparts or colleagues who work in jordan with refugee camps however the compassionate systems uh, framework does not necessarily require fancy schools or uh, you know infrastructure it's it's a way of thinking and it's an approach and it it could happen under a tree like it did in the burush kishor parampara i don't think it requires if you have you know uh, very good resources and internet and everything else it's wonderful like these children in indiana polis but it's not necessary you could do this with primary resources as well it's an approach it's a way of thinking it's a kind of experiential learning it is experiential learning and it's an attitude Mm-hmm. it is about developing social and emotional skills and you know children in in slums develop those skills and children in rich schools develop those skills it's not that you need a uh, money for developing social and emotional skills and a uh, mindfulness and contemplative practice so somebody has written there is no name <laughs> so if someone ignores you for no reason or telling you the reason how to deal with the situation Uh, the, the, these are we don't know why people ignore us however we can always give people the benefit of doubt and uh, think that they are right now and not in a good place and i believe from my own experience that times when i am uh, i used to be angry were times when i shut up i did not talk to people and people might interpret it as me ignoring them but actually i was suffering when you are angry you are suffering you can if you, next time you get angry or you are scared look at what happens on the sensations in your body you will most probably feel heat sweat uh, you are shivering so these are not good sensations and you are yourself suffering so I, the best thing to do when someone ignores you is to give them the benefit of doubt and believe that at the moment they are actually suffering so much that they cannot even connect with you and if the situation is right make that extra effort to connect with them yourself or sometimes leave them alone for the moment and come back and check but um, yeah it's best to give people the benefit of doubt thank you so chaya parekh is asking is csf applicable in e learning to chaya parekh um so right now all children around the world are going through the e learning including these little ones in indiana polis uh, so yes it is very much applicable in e learning because as i said it's an approach uh, it's a constructivist uh, pedagogy which looks you know which has um, social and emotional learning integrated in it yes our teachers are facing some challenges because of the medium and the dryness of the medium because they you know they can't feel and experience their kids so developing that social field is more uh, challenging however it, it it it's been pretty positive with many the school uh, schools teachers have uh, you know asked students to talk about how they are experiencing the lockdown and what is happening to them uh while they sit what have they gained from sitting at home and you know so it can be done it can definitely be done uh, online and we have to it's also about systems thinking to be able to you know deal with the current crisis and take the best from it um and right now it's a need for vr so it's very flexible and it will adjust to this yes. so uh, i think being a teacher you know it is always a, a question in the mind that uh, how do you assess or evaluate compassion uh, in this teaching program or do you, you don't because it is so difficult so um we are still in the prototyping phase with the compassionate systems framework and we have not come up with an assessment for students uh, however we do have um assessments for uh, educators uh, currently i will in, in a month's time i'm going to be uh, you know submitting my e portfolio for the work that i've done in compassion systems framework 
so yes there are ways of assessing teachers and educators but not on whether they were compassionate or not but on the actions they took which itself speak for their compassionate integrity your actions are a life example of whether you were compassionate or not uh, you know the product of your actions of what you can show in your e portfolio in the end what is it that you did uh, so with children uh, we have not yet started assessing them on compassion or on any of the social and emotional learning capabilities or contemplative practices however again with children we see it in the connectedness that they feel to these sdgs to the sustainable development goals and the action they are taking towards them uh, and it's fantastic so we also have a youth group for uh, systems uh, compassionate systems framework and this youth group is working across continents uh working with the age group 14 to 18 to you know activism like uh, greta uh is not just limited to, to greta but there are many youth groups like that which are also taking action and in school students are taking action towards supporting uh, developing more sustainable uh um living so that's another assessment that is very uh tangible because in you know, assessments need to be tangible and sdgs are one of those tangible assessments that we can have which show compassionate integrity in action uh one more question is it all right if i ask one or two more questions absolutely okay so shruti jain is asking where all the students are being taught to be more business minded think about profits irrespective of the human cost isn't making them compassionate a difficult task as everywhere everyone wants to succeed at any cost this is different dynamic you know we have to we are facing mm -hmm. so i you know that is what uh, uh, that's why i mentioned it that compassion is an essential systemic property of the mind somehow we look at compassion as something very touchy feely uh, however to be a systems thinker you have to be inherently compassionate if you do not you know we had a financial crisis in 2008 and it was because we lack compassion we did not understand the consequences of our own actions so this kind of business actions which are short sighted which are going to cause financial losses our actions which a systems thinker will not take because his benefit lies in the benefit of others the covid crisis shows us that we are interconnected so i cannot do something which i think is good for me and will hurt others and not hurt me you know i wear a mask not to protect myself i wear it to protect the other and the other wears the mask to protect me and that's how interconnectedness works and interdependence works and a true systems thinker will not take actions in business which are so limited by their thinking or by a mental model which says my profit and their loss is actually my profit my profit and their profit is my profit otherwise it's loss for everyone so uh, there is one question from alka sankhala what difference you found here about this in india and other outside education system so um it was very challenging when i came back i came to india last year and i have been you know sort of to checking the education system to see uh, where what opportunities i had to bring compassionate systems and i live in uh, bombay and many schools showed interest uh, however it was the middle of the academic year and schools had already you know so many other interventions that they couldn't bring in something like that but a lot of uh, schools uh, were, were very positive about it social emotional learning itself is a new concept in india it came in last year and then compassionate system framework is an approach which includes social emotional learning but there are so many other things in it that it is going to take some time but i just read um uh, the national education policy for, that was drafted last year in 2019 i read it to see you know if there's any change and social and emotional learning has been included in the national education policy uh so that's a very positive uh, step uh 
uh, mindfulness meditation has been included in the national education policy for India in 2019, which is an amazing step. Uh, in fact, we did a 10 minute Anapan mindfulness meditation session with all the uh, teachers and heads of the CBSE schools in Delhi, which is all very positive. So it will take a long time to seep into the system, but we can start seeing little pockets that uh, will start making the change, you know. So we cannot wait for the larger system to uh, make that change. It can also start with little pockets. And uh, Vladimir Ji uh, from Greenville is asking question. Do you think that other qualities are also necessary, such as sincerity, humility, gratitude, etc., for compassion to function? I think they go hand in hand. I sometimes when I think uh, I am so grateful to have this opportunity to do this whole program. So yes, gratefulness and sincerity are a part of it. These are, you know, the list of values. There's absolutely no value that you can say is more important than the other. Um, however, we have centered around compassionate systems and it includes these values. How can you not be humble or not be grateful when you are a part of this system and you see how tiny you are and how affected you are by something that happens in Wuhan, China. So uh, I think they are all very interrelated. Okay. Uh, I think we have two more questions and then we'll wind up. It's like uh, if child is not uh, talking or open about its issues, how to deal with such situations? Okay, so uh, it depends on the age, the age of the child um, and this is also a very uh, parent and teacher related issue. We need to understand the background. However, it's important to uh, let be with the child. Maria Montessori had a beautiful, uh, wrote a beautiful book about, um, uh, I don't remember the name now. Uh, it's about allowing the child to be and giving them the space, um, an absorbent mind. Yes, an absorbent mind by Mar Maria Montessori. It is giving them that space to ex explore what they want to explore and they will talk when they are ready to talk. Uh, there is no right age to start talking. There is no right age to start talking. And everything is on a spectrum. Some children might do it early and some children might do it late. And and sometimes some children might be better at some things at some point it, at, at that young age when they're under six it's very it's uh, unfair to yourself and to do uh, the children to label them and um, it's just best to allow them to explore and be and give them that space uh, to explore they are like blank slates everything we do uh, is like a sanskar. It is affected. Uh, it is. It's like drawing a line on them. So be very careful what line you draw. Try not to draw lines on them. Let them draw their own lines. Very well said. Priya is asking, ma'am, are there any online resources through which we can stay connected with the concept and related developments? Uh, absolutely, you can go on the uh, website for the Center for Compassion, uh, Center for uh, Systems Awareness, uh, which is at Boston. But you can. I can type in the, if somebody can type in the link for the Center for Systems Awareness. There are many tools uh, which are freely available. There are videos on systems thinking that you can access uh, by Peter Senge and by many others. There are animations, there are research papers that you can read. And um, you, can, uh, you can also put in my email in the link. You are welcome to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for this last question. We now draw close to the webinar. Thank you again, Suchitra Ji, for joining us and enriching our understanding on Compassionate System Framework. Many thanks to all participants who attended this lecture and supported our endeavors. Thank you once again. Take care. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.